Also, Fan TV, Chris, big win today. Uh, easy in the end, but, you know, we really needed that today. You know what I mean? The, the, the momentum going forward into these big games, we really needed that. So you're not going to use your standard joke these days, oh, what are you still doing here? You haven't raised the money yet. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a fantastic win. Mm. Um, when well, are you still doing it? <laughs> I'm, I apologise, I haven't raised enough money yet. By the way, if you still want to donate, it's still open. I'll, so, off, I? <laughs> I'll just say this whilst I remember it. So it's, it's just mm. over the two and a half K landmark oh, now. Um, all the details can be found on my Twitter, new Twitter page at the mm. Arsenal Chris, and the just giving pages on there. So yeah, please still donate if you if you're mm. able to, and it's payday now. So mm. I appreciate. I'm probably gonna have to. I appreciate. It's I'm gonna payday have, now. <laughs> uh, I'll mention this again after the Chelsea game. So if we lose that, then the donations probably go up. Now listen, yeah. right? Was Today's performance, down to Steve Bold's passion. I knew you were going to ask that. No, I've got to ask. Listen, <laughs> there's, there's, some fans, there's some fans suggesting that the fact that Arsene Wenger went on the touchline, the passion shown by Steve Bold went through to the team. They started the game quickly and got the job done before half-time. You're such a wind-up merchant, aren't you? I'm not you? winding you, you up. I'm asking you, a serious question. You can see my buttons and you're just going, press, press, press. <laughs> I'm asking <laughs> because a do you know what? I came round here a few moments ago and the first two people, the two Chuckle Brothers, came racing up to me, <laughs> shout like bees to a light, like shouting in my face, Steve Bowles, Yellow Army, Wenger out, and all of that sort of rubbish. Mm. Let's get thing, one thing straight. This was not Steve Bold did not mastermind today's victory. He's not suddenly become in charge of Arsenal Football Club. Arsenal Wenger is serving a touchline game ban. The, the actual uh, reality of a touchline game ban is uh, negligible because you can still talk to the team uh, before the game. He's, Steve Bold is not making any major decisions. You can't talk to him at half time, though, can you? Yes, you can. Yep. Okay. It's just touch, that stadium ban. So, touchline ban, you can still communicate mm. from the stands. You can still speak to them at half time. The yeah. I no, think, but I mean, you can't come into the change yeah. room at half time, yeah, can you? Can. I think you can oh, for okay. a touchline. All right, I stand corrected. So that's why I say for stadium mm. ban, which is what Mourinho got one stadium game ban for, I think it was Stoke away mm. uh, last year or something. Mm. That's different. You can't go anywhere inside. So that's what Arsenal actually probably got off reasonably low. I know a lot of people said that, um, mm. you know, it seems harsh, but to me, that was you know, fair, mm. fair mm. for his, mm. for what he did. He was out of order for what he did in my opinion. Go, go, and you can't listen. compare to John Terry or mm. Alan Pardew. It's got to be judged on its own merits. Going back to the game, it was a quick start and Welbeck, goals, Walcott goals, you know, guys coming back. Good performances all around by the team. Yeah, it was a fantastic team performance and we'll touch on Welbeck in a second. But yeah, I think the schedule very much worked in our favour for once this year. Mm. Every single game we play, it's all, nearly always were the team that, that is uh, coming into the game have on the back of like playing Champions in midweek or whatever. Yeah. We're usually playing three mm. games a week, whereas the other team is playing once a week. But today, you could see what, you know, I mean, Southampton put out their second string. It was, it was a great time to play them. You know, I could tell, see that as soon as the draw was made, they're gonna, either mm. going to be on a massive high or massive low, and they're resting players to stay. And it, it wasn't a concession. You still got to play very well to, mm. to win, but, and to win 5 0 away. But I think the performance would have probably been their first team as well, to be honest. Um, mm. But so I, th I find it a bit of a shame from the FA Cup's viewpoint that, um, you know, the Southampton basically conceded today's match. You know, if, mm. so the FA Cup to me is still, I feel sad because I still feel it's a prestigious trophy and it's one of, we're one of a few teams now that actually still takes it seriously. Mm. And, you know, the, the FA Cup, I know it's like, it's not the, the our number one priority, but it's still like a great trophy to win. And most mm. teams don't even win. Any. Southampton have won one trophy and since they formed in 1885, 100 year, over 100 years, one mm. FA Cup. We've won it two times in the last three years. So every trophy should be cherished, you know. And the same fans that were complaining about no trophy for nine years are now saying, oh, the FA Cup's beneath us. So it's rubbish. Mm. And, you know, um, they'll be saying the same when we win in the league whether it's this year or next year or whenever they'll say oh the league's not enough we have to win the Champions League so I just find it you know sad that a lot of teams are not taking the FA Cup that seriously who, who, anymore it's about who, who, would you like, who would you like in the next round? As long as it's not um, Bayern Munich then you know that's fine <laughs> now Oxford United whoever a new ground away from home would be great mm. but yeah going back to Welbeck obviously fantastic to see him back and to play like that when he hasn't played since May, um, mm. is fantastic. He looked really sharp, and that that, pa that pace um, really scares me. And I think the link up with Sanchez—I know he, they didn't play together today—but mm. I think him and Sanchez very much complement each other. And also about Welbeck, it shows how many goals were scoring. This—I think we scored like 15 or something. I'll probably stand to be correct on that, but 15 more goals than at this stage 
last mm. season. And it's not just more goals, it's, it's being spread out amongst the team as well. So we're not too overly reliant on anyone, in mm. my opinion. Um, whereas in seasons past, we can very much be accused of that, like um, Van Persie or Sanchez. But look, this season, if one of our big players gets injured, I, I think we're still going to be fine. I have to say, I, I think us, maybe Chelsea, but we'll probably have the, we're in a really good place right now. Like we're at this very moment in time, um, if you consider the schedule and mm. compared to other two, like we're, let's just go with the headline facts. We're second in the league top of the Champions League group and we're into the uh, fifth round of the FA Cup. You look at other teams uh, when they've been faced with a tough schedule. As soon as Liverpool play three games a week, they've gone into meltdown the last month. Mm. Same with Man City. They've coped awfully in the league this season when they've had to come back after Europe. And so, you know, we'll probably have them... I mean, Chelsea have had nothing else to consider apart from mm. the league. Obviously, they're having a great season as well, but, you know, we're in a good place at the moment. We can kick on from here, hopefully, but we've got a big week coming up.